Congratulations on the purchase of your new Tenant Model 6400 battery power sweeper. Not only will this machine perform well the day you get it, but for a long time thereafter. To clean with the Model 6400, simply get into the driver's seat, turn on the machine, confirm the hopper door is open, and the vacuum system is on. Next, lower the main brush and side brush if needed, and propel forward at about 3 to 5 miles per hour. This video is presented in five sections. Pre-operational checks, operating the machine, emptying and cleaning the machine, post-operational checks, and machine controls. Pre-operational checks. In order to keep your machine in peak running condition, it's important to perform daily service checks before you start sweeping. Open the battery compartment and check the electrolyte level of each cell. If necessary, add enough electrolyte to cover the plates in each cell. Check the hydraulic fluid level by removing the breather cap on the hydraulic tank. Check the skirts in the brush compartment for wear or tears. Proper dust control depends on their condition. The hopper left front skirt should also be checked to see that it is within one eighth inch of the floor. The brushes are extremely important for top sweeping performance. Neither brush should have wire, string, rope, or banding material wrapped around them. You should also remove and rotate the main brush at least once a week. This will ensure even wear for maximum brush life. When securing the main brush idler hub, the T-bolt should be secured but not tightened with a wrench. The tab inside the brush compartment door will keep the T-bolt from loosening. This system allows for the main brush to be removed easily without the use of tools. Release the latches and open the hopper dust filter cover to check the dust filter and seals. Lift the filter and check the seal on the bottom of the filter. Also look for tears and confirm that it is not impacted with dirt and dust. Check the permafilter for any debris blocking the airflow path and wipe the filter tray clear of dust. Close the hopper dust filter cover and secure the latches. Check the seal on the hopper opening. Operating the machine. Once you are seated in the operator's seat, adjust both the seat and steering wheel to your comfort. Turn the key to the right to the on position. On the far left of the operator is the vacuum fan duct and filter shaker control. For normal sweeping, confirm that this lever is in the center position. Just to the left of the operator is the main brush control and the hopper control levers. Whenever you are sweeping, confirm that the hopper door is open and then set the main brush lever forward to the adjustable stop. The side brush is great for sweeping right up to curbs, racks and walls. If the side brush is to be used, lower it using the lever on the right side of the control panel in front of the operator. The brush pressure can be adjusted by turning the knob above the directional control pedal. The main brush and side brush both start automatically when lowered and stop when raised. For best results while sweeping, propel the machine slowly, about as fast as a person walks, and overlap two or three inches on each path. If you've never driven a tenant machine, spend a few minutes cleaning with your machine in an open area. Because it steers using a single rear wheel, it is extremely responsive to steering wheel movement. Emptying and cleaning the machine. Once the hopper becomes full, it's time to empty the hopper and clean the machine. Run the filter shaker 30 to 60 seconds to shake the filter clear of dust. To dump the hopper, hold the hopper door lever back until the door is fully closed. If the machine is equipped with the optional hopper door closed indicator light, the light will illuminate. Hold the hopper raise lever back until the hopper is fully raised. 
place the hopper over the container or the site where you will dump the contents. When dumping the hopper, the vacuum duct control should be placed in the closed position. Open the hopper door by pushing the hopper door lever forward. After the hopper is empty, close the hopper door by holding the lever back until the door is fully closed and then back away from the dump site. Finally, hold the hopper lever forward until the hopper is completely lowered. Post-operational checks. After you are finished emptying the machine, there are a couple of things that should be checked to make sure it's ready for use the next day. Check the main and side brushes for wear, damage, or debris. Check the brush compartment skirts for wear and damage. Once you're done operating for the day, return your machine to its parking place, set the parking brake, and turn off the power switch. Machine controls. If you've never used the Model 6400 before, here's a quick orientation you'll find handy. Let's look at the controls and the instrumentation. To the far left of the operator is the vacuum fan airflow and shaker motor control. If the lever is in the middle position, the brush compartment, hopper, and dust filter compartment are vacuumized. This setting is used any time the machine is being used and dust control is desired. If the lever is to the right, the airflow is blocked. This setting is used when sweeping in a damp area where dust control is not required and you need to protect the dust filter from being damaged by moisture. If the lever is held in the left position, the shaker motor used to clean the dust filter runs. This shaker system should be used often for at least 30 to 60 seconds every time. A clean filter provides the best dust control. The filter shaker system should also be used when the hopper is being emptied. Immediately to the operator's left are the controls for the main brush, hopper door position, and hopper position. To lower the main brush to the working position, pull back slightly, lean it to the right, and allow it to move forward until it rests against the adjustable stop. To raise the main brush before parking the machine, pull the lever fully back, lean it to the left, and place it into the locked up position. To adjust the main brush pattern, the adjustable stop can be moved forward for more brush contact and backward for less brush contact. Simply turn the handle counterclockwise to loosen the jam nut, move it to the desired position, and then secure it by turning the handle clockwise. To shut the hopper door, hold the lever back until the door is fully closed. If your machine is equipped with the optional door closed indicator light, the light will turn on when the door is fully closed. To open the door, push the lever forward. To raise the hopper, hold the lever back until the hopper is fully raised. To lower the hopper, hold the lever forward until the hopper is fully lowered. A safety note. Any time you leave or work around the machine with the hopper up, the hopper safety arm must be deployed and the parking brake set. In front of the operator, on the left end of the control panel, are four indicator lights, some of which are optional. Starting at the top left and working down, the optional dust filter clogged light. This light will be on if the dust filter is clogged. This indicates that running the filter shaker system is required. The thermosentry light. This light will be on if there is excessive heat in the hopper. On the top right is the optional hopper door position light. This light will be on when the hopper door is closed. The optional hydraulic filter bypass light. This light will be on if the hydraulic filter becomes clogged. This indicates to the operator that the hydraulic oil filter should be changed. Located above the indicator lights is the optional emergency power disconnect switch. By depressing this knob, all power to the machine will be disconnected. By turning the knob in the direction of the arrows, the switch will be reset to on. To the right of the emergency power disconnect switch is the battery discharge indicator, which indicates the amount of charge remaining in the battery. To the right of the steering column is the hour meter, which records the machine operating hours. Below the hour meter is the steering column tilt knob, 
which allows the steering column to be adjusted to the operator's comfort. To the lower right of the steering tilt knob is the horn button. Above the horn button is the power switch. Simply turn the power switch clockwise to turn the machine power on and counterclockwise to turn the machine power off. To the right of the power switch is the side brush control handle. To lower the side brush, pull back slightly on the handle, lean it to the left, and lower it into the working position. To raise the side brush, pull the handle back, lean it to the right, and place it into the locked up position. As mentioned earlier, the side brush deflection can be adjusted by using the handle above the directional control pedal. To increase the side brush deflection, turn the handle counterclockwise. To decrease the side brush deflection, turn it clockwise. If your machine is equipped with headlights and taillights, to the right of the side brush control handle is the headlight and taillight switch. To turn them on, press the top of the switch. If this switch is left in this position, the lights will automatically shut off when the power switch is turned off. To turn them off when the power switch is on, press the bottom of the lights control switch. The machine speed and direction of travel are determined by a single foot pedal. The further you push down on the toe, the faster you go forward. The more you push down on the heel, the faster you go in reverse. The service brake is located to the left of the directional control pedal. The parking brake is toe operated. To set the parking brake, depress the service brake pedal and push the lever above the pedal with your toe. The brake will stay in the locked position until the service brake pedal is depressed again and released. Electrical circuit breakers protect the system in case of an electrical malfunction. The breaker can be reset by pushing the button in the center of the breaker after it has been allowed to cool. If the circuit breaker cannot be reset or trips again, qualified service personnel should be notified. If you've never operated a tenant machine before, spend just a couple of minutes familiarizing yourself with these controls. Performing the daily service checks and following the proper operating procedures for this particular machine will ensure that it will perform in top condition throughout its useful life. You will find it cleans better, has fewer maintenance problems, and effectively enhances your work environment. And we're sure you'll be happy with your Tenant Model 6400 battery-powered sweeper for a long time.